McLaughlin Group, which airs every weekend, plus a daily primetime cable show for CNBC and a weekly interview show for PBS called John McLaughlin's One-on-One. I try to watch them all when I can. Please welcome John McLaughlin. Yes. It's nice to see you. Thank you. I got a call from Johnny. He says not to make you look too good. Oh, good. Well, thank you very much. I, I reassured him. I said I will not participate in a bloodless coup. I see. I see. Well, <laughs> certainly not one to stir up controversy. You are. <laughs> well, let me ask you about the panelists on your group now. Uh, I guess who would be the most... I guess Buchanan would probably be the most well-known. Uh, Pat Buchanan is quite well-known. He tries to be on the air every hour <laughs> of the television day. We're waiting for him to sign off in the evening with a prayer. Uh, Pat, as you know, is a uh, pit bull conservative. However, right. he has... Sent seismic sharks into the into the conservative movement by reason of his Buchanan Fonda axis during the war. He's been against the war. Wait a minute, the Buchanan Fonda B- axis. Buchanan uh, McGovern axis. The oh, Buchanan Jane Fonda axis. Pat has been strongly against the war. Now, did that surprise you? However, he, he would... continues to keep his uh, Uzi and his rosary beads underneath his seat. <laughs> It did surprise us, although Pat, I think, has become a little bit neo-isolationist. Neo-isolationist? Yes, and he wants to make sure that what we do overseas is totally in the vital national interest of the nation. And he's got a point. Yeah. Not necessarily in this particular context, but he had very good arguments. And it remains to be seen what the aftermath will bring. Although, so far, so good. Yeah. yeah. So you think... So far, very good. We all gave him an A-plus on last week's show. Uh Uh-huh. Now, you make a lot of predictions on this show. Now, uh, well, well, we have other panelists, too. You well, want to no, hear well, about okay. them? Well, let's see. You have, you have Shields. Who I, Shields is from... No, Black Shields Black. doesn't do the show. He used to do the show, but he's, he's migrated. But we oh, have Jack Jermon. Jack, Jack Jermon is yeah. kind of a rogue gentleman. He's mm-hmm. kind of a grumpy liberal. Grumpy liberal? We call him the mother of all grumps. <laughs> and uh, Jack gets more grumpy the more successful the Republicans are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he also gets grumpy when he loses at the racetrack, and he keeps a racing form underneath his seat. Uh-huh. We may have to have him on as a rebuttal. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> then, then we have Fred Barnes, who's kind of a cocky yuppie. Right, cocky yuppie. And uh, he's to the, to the uh, left of Pat Buchanan, but he's to the right of everybody else. And Fred Barnes uh, keeps uh, Tooth Whitener and uh, a voodoo doll of Eleanor Clift underneath his seat because Eleanor Clift does the show and yeah. she's quite far left. Do you ever get Christmas cards from these people at the holiday time? <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't exchange Christmas cards. No, really, I'm we surprised. We exchange dirty looks. I'm surprised. Let me just talk about some of the predictions now. Okay. Now, have you been right on most of these, would you say? This is about... Absolutely. <laughs> Gee, I'm shocked by your answer. Now, well, the... I, I called, uh, let's see, I called the exact date of the ending of the war one month before it, uh, before it ended. Now, wait a minute. Now, didn't I watch the show? You one did. Month? Didn't I, I played I the videotape you... last week. Yeah, well, you, I you rubbed just... their noses in it. But didn't you one time say there wouldn't be a ground war? Didn't I hear you say that? Uh, I said I thought there would be a deal, and I think any rational person would have said that. But Saddam was, Saddam was saying... I'm dealing with rational is, people now. That's correct. Saddam was saying, sadly, insane. Yeah. Right? So, so you were right, even though you predicted the other thing. Well, not all the predictions are correct. No, no. Well, let me ask you... But something. I predicted that Benson would be the running mate of Michael Dukakis. I predicted yeah. that Pierre Trudeau would resign. I predicted that uh, General Haig would resign. I predicted from the very beginning that George Bush would get the nomination and win the presidency. Well, how about... And I don't, I don't like to predict too much with too much accuracy because it gets very discouraging for the other panelists. Well, how about... <laughs> how about 92? What do you think is going to happen with the Democrats? What do you I think? don't know. There's been no sightings of the Democrats lately. They're nowhere to be found. Well, McGovern They're not says, on the horizon. McGovern says... He I mean, here we are less than a year from Iowa, Jay. Yeah. And there's no, there's no one around. Well, I who mean, do you predict? Let's see. Come on. Well, I'm, on hearing, line, I'm hearing that Gephardt has been hearing Hail to the Chief in the middle of the night. Oh, the Hundu guy. They call and him that, the Hundu guy. Yeah. that Gephardt will run, uh, but the true sign be, will be whether or not his eyebrows darken. Because of his eyebrows darken, that will be like the gray smoke coming up from the Vatican, and we will have a candidate. Mm, I see. Uh, we also have Sam Nunn, who has those uh, urges to yeah, run. Yeah, but he got hurt, didn't he? He got hurt bad. Yeah, he got hurt he, bad. He, he shifting he against... his positions a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, George Mitchell, who was the uh, majority speaker of the United States uh, Senate. Yeah. George Mitchell is supposed to be interested yeah, in running, but he's got to get smaller yeah. glasses. He yeah. looks so much like Sally uh, Jesse Sally Raphael. Raphael. Yeah, yeah. 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 That can hurt you when you're running for president, looking like Sally Jesse Raphael. Yeah. You want to hear the rest of the list? Uh, but we got Mario. 
No, no. Mario, the Hamlet of Albany? Well, always a bridesmaid. You New Yorkers out there? Yeah, but but he's been too much. Isn't that true? Well, the problem, because he's got these enormous uh, financial problems in New York, these huge deficits, but in addition to that, the Republicans have a tape of him saying in November that if we just give a little piece of Kuwait to Saddam Hussein, that will resolve the whole matter. Oh, Ooh. But the fact remains, he's a very formidable boy. He's the best interview I've ever... Have you ever had him on this show? No, he never... We don't get too many political people no. on the show because of the darkened eyebrows and all the other things. So much, <laughs> so much work goes into it. Let me ask you one... Benson, question. now, Benson, Lloyd, Benson, I thought and I predicted he would run. Now I'm hearing he's not going to run, and that creates great generational problems for people like myself. I mean, we had hoped from a generational point of view that yeah. Lloyd would be out there carrying the, carrying the, the banner, torch, right? With maybe Fred as VP. Oh, I will be right back right after this.